Hey Jaywalkers, happy Sunday. So I got a question for you. What's your favorite movie? I want you to think about it for a second. Like it could be any movie, an oldie, a TV movie, made for TV, Netflix original. When people think of their favorite movie, like they get some like feelings about that movie. Like what makes it great? I'll bet whatever movie you thought of, what makes it great is that somebody overcomes something. I'll bet that there were like some odds that were insurmountable and they were defeated. Maybe it was somebody who shouldn't have started a relationship with somebody and it happened against all odds. Maybe it was like a battle that needed to happen, like a Rocky Balboa type battle where the underdog comes in and it doesn't seem like they've got a chance and then they win. My favorite movies of all time are the Lord of the Rings movies. If you've never watched them, you've got to take like 27 hours or however long the movies are and just sit down and have a marathon because they are amazing movies. And the thing that makes them amazing to me is the odds are stacked against this group of people that are trying to accomplish this task and it just seems impossible. My daughter's favorite movie, Joy, she loves Cinderella. And in its own way, that's kind of the same story. What's happening in the movie Cinderella is there's this girl who's been mistreated. She's lost her family. She's being raised by like a wicked stepmother lady and these sisters that are treated way better than her. And against all odds, she's got an opportunity to meet a prince and marry him. Impossible. That would never happen to a, to a girl whose job is to clean in, in a house somewhere. But that's what makes the movie great, is that the odds are impossible. And I'll bet your favorite movie has something to do with something like that. Today we're looking at the story of Gideon in Judges chapter 7. And we have just that kind of story. One that is against all odds impossible. See, the reason why this thing works out isn't because of cinema magic or because of great storytelling. It's because of God. And so we're going to zoom in and look at this story, pausing at a few places to see what God's trying to say to us today. We've been walking through the story of Gideon for a little while now. In Judges, it starts in Judges chapter 6. We know that God is with Gideon, but Gideon's a little bit scared of what's coming because he knows he has to take on this army that's giant, way, way outnumbering them. Thousands and thousands to one. And this is what is going to happen. Judges chapter 7. Then Jerubbabel, that is Gideon, and all the people who were with him rose early and encamped beside the spring of Herod. And the camp of Midian was north of them by the hill of Moray in the valley. The Lord said to Gideon, The people with you are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hand, lest Israel boast over me, saying, My own hand has saved me. Pause. So the odds are already against these guys. Thousands to one. And God doesn't say, You know what, I'm going to take these odds. And we're going to defeat them. What God says is these odds are too good for you. There's too many of you. And if you win now, you're going to think that this small number of people that was big enough to get together and to put up a stand against the Midianites, you're going to think that you guys did it. And you're not going to think that it was me. Now, at first, that kind of sounds like God is a little bit conceited. Like he's like, you know, I don't want you to get the glory. I want the glory. But when we look at the, the nature of God, then we see something a little bit different. See, what God's saying is, I know that you have this tendency to think that you did something and to take all the credit for yourself. And when you do that, it makes you big-headed. It makes you think that you can handle things on your own. And that's not the best thing for you. I know that you think it's great when you think you're great. But really what you need is me. And so I don't want to mislead you. I don't want you to be misunderstood about where your power comes from. I don't want you to think that if you try really hard 
And if you do a really good job, and if you train, and if you prepare, that you're gonna be able to do this on your own. Because the truth is, we can't do anything on our own. We can't accomplish anything good on our own. Seems crazy to say, I get it. Because it seems like people accomplish good things all the time. But if it's for them, and it's not for God, then the way that it's looked at in the long term is that it wasn't for anything that was worthwhile. See, God is the focus. God's the point. And this God is not conceited. What he knows is that what's best for you is to recognize him. And he wants you to see that he can overcome any odds, any obstacles in your life. So God is pointing at this scenario and he's saying, you know what? You got too many people still. Let's take those numbers down. So a cool little story happens and he basically says, now therefore proclaim in the ears of the people saying, whoever is fearful and trembling, let him return home and hurry away from Mount Gilead. Then 22,000 of the people returned and 10,000 remained. So there were 32,000 people. Over two thirds of them were scared. Not surprising. God didn't need those numbers. He didn't need everybody. Everybody wasn't ready for the battle that was coming because everybody wasn't secure in what they believed in the fact that their God was stronger than the battle. And those people that left, they don't ever get to see this miracle happen. The one that's about to happen. They leave scared. God's not mad at them. They just miss out on this great opportunity. So then the Lord says to Gideon, the people are still too many. And then there's this weird thing about them going down to a stream and some of them lap the water up with their tongues and some of them like scoop the water with their hands. And God says, I want just the people who lapped it up with their tongues. And those people were 300 men. So now the 10,000 that already got cut by a lot just got cut down to 300 people. And the Lord said to Gideon in verse 7, With the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand and let all the others go, every man to his home. So God's saying, I don't need a, a huge army. I don't need a ton of people to do what I'm about to do. I want some of you to experience the miracle, but I want you to know that this is a miracle. I want you to know that it's against all odds. It's impossible. I'm writing this story so that in the future, people can't say, yeah, they were just tough. They were just really good at fighting. They're gonna look at this story and they're gonna know that God is the one who did it. And this is what God's setting up. God loves to tell a good story. He loves to show people that it's him that is the powerful one, that it's him that they need to lean on. And that's not their own strength. We're going to jump down a little bit to verse 9. It says, That same night the Lord said to Gideon, Arise, go down against the camp, for I have given it into your hand. But if you're afraid to go down, go down to the camp with Pura, your servant. And you shall hear what they say, and afterward your hands shall be strengthened to go down against the camp. So God's done this already a couple times for Gideon. He's proved to him that he was there and he's gonna do it one more time. He's gonna say, look, I know those odds are not in your favor, 300 against hundreds of thousands. But if you're scared, if you're nervous, go on down to the camp, see what they're saying about you. So Gideon goes down to the camp and he listens because he is scared. And what he hears is a dream of a man. And he says, in verse 13, when Gideon came, behold, a man was telling a dream to his comrade. And he said, behold, I dreamed a dream. A cake of barley bread tumbled into the camp of Midian and came to the tent and struck it so that it fell and turned it upside down so that the tent lay flat. And his comrade answered, this is no other than the sword of Gideon, the son of Joash, a man of Israel. God has given into his hand Midian in all the camp. Wow. Gideon gets to see the confirmation that God's about to 
use him to defeat this giant army. Verse 15, I think, is a key verse. It says, As soon as Gideon heard the telling of the dream and its interpretation, he worshipped. See, God had just revealed something to Gideon. God had just provided for Gideon in a way that gave him confidence, that gave him an understanding of what God was trying to do in his life. And the first thing Gideon does is he worships God for that. I just want to ask you, how's your worship life been? A lot of us uh, are still in this state where we're not getting around too many people. Maybe we're not going to our local church like we used to, or maybe that's not something that we've been doing lately or even for a while before the pandemic. But how's your worship life? Are you taking time to praise God for the things that he's doing, for the things that he wants to do in your life? See, worship is about thanking God. It's about recognizing God for who he is. It's about seeing God in his power and in his might and his provision for you. When God does something for you, the natural response should be to worship him, to thank him. Man, throw on a song and take a lap around the block. Listen to some beautiful worship music. It's going to change your heart. It's going to change your focus. While we're on that point, like, what are you listening to musically? Are you listening to things that are bringing glory to God? Are you listening to things that are worshiping God? I'm not saying that every single thing that you listen to has to be a worship song. I'm just saying, are you spending time to worship the Lord in song, in action, in prayer, in deed? Because Gideon recognizes God's hand moving in his life and he thanks him for it and he worships him for it because God is worthy of that worth worship and he's worthy of that praise. So we're going to skip down just a little bit to verse 19. So Gideon and the hundred men who were with him came to the outskirts of the camp at the beginning of the middle watch, which they had just set. So the 300 men, as if they were already not too few people, split into three different camps, three different groups. The ones that are with Gideon, 100 people, are heading one direction, and the two others are heading two other directions. And they blew the trumpets, this is their game plan, and smashed the jars that were in their hands. So their plan is to blow trumpets and to smash jars. Then the three companies blew the trumpets and broke the jars. They held in their left hands the torches and in their right hands the trumpets to blow. And they cried out, a sword for the Lord and for Gideon. Every man stood in his place around the camp and all the army ran. They cried out and fled. 300 men against hundreds of thousands. It said just a little bit before that there were so many that their camels couldn't even be counted. There are people and people and people. And there's 300, this tiny little group that has some trumpets and some jars in their own voices. Verse 22. When they blew the 300 trumpets, the Lord set every man's sword against his comrade and against all the army. This is not the first time this has happened and it won't be the last time it happens either. God has taken their enemies and turned them against each other. See, God showed up. God is fighting their battle for them. And all they had to do was worship. And all they had to do was praise. And all they had to do was yell out. And all they had to do was trust. And all they had to do was believe that if they walked into this in faith, this thing that God has told them to do, this thing that he's shown them was going to succeed if they just step into it, that he was going to show up and he was going to be the one who fought their battle for them. I 
love this. There's a song called Defender, and it makes me think of that song. All they did was worship. All they did was bow down. All they did was stand still. And God, the great defender, won the battle. I don't know what the Midianites saw. I don't know if they saw the army of angels like in the story that Elijah showed his arm bearer. I don't know if it was just the fear of the, the yelling, the fear of the dream that they had with the tent being flattened. But whatever it was, the tables have turned. And now the people that are in this large army are the ones that are losing. They're the ones that are fleeing. It says, And the army fled as far as Beth Shittah towards Zerahah, as far as the border of Abel Meholah by Tabath. And the men of Israel were called out from Naphtali and from Asher and from all Manasseh, and they pursued after Midian. See, when God fights our battles, the tables turn. So I just want to ask you in your life, who do you relate to? Why do you like those movies that you like? My guess is it's because you don't see yourself as this giant army. You don't see yourself as the ones that are coming against this small group of people. You see yourself as the small group of people. You see yourself as the underdog. We relate to those stories because that's who we are. We are outnumbered. We are at a loss. We will not win the fights that are before us without intervention from our God. We are not strong enough. We are not good enough. But when we'll worship him, the one who is strong enough, the one who is good enough, the tables turn and our enemies start fighting against each other instead of fighting against us. And they are routed before us. And we get to pursue them and chase them away because God has fought our battle for us. And that's what happened in the story of Gideon. It wasn't because of their might. It wasn't because these 300 men were so great that they won this great victory. It's because God was so great. It's because God was in it. And it's because they trusted him with a few trumpets, torches, and their own voices. They knew that if they would do this small step, that God would do the rest. What small step is he calling you to take today? I don't care what the odds look like. God doesn't care. He's strong enough to overcome any odds, any battle. I learned that last week on our Wednesday night Zoom call. Some of the things that some of the people have been through are amazing. And God's brought them through it. And God's fought that battle with them, for them, inside of them. And he wants to do it again. Because that's the story that you get to tell when you side with God. About how there was no way. Man, how did Frodo get that ring to Mount Doom? It was impossible. We had some people beside him that were helping him but they had no chance against that army. How did Cinderella find Prince Charming? Yeah, she had a little bit of help, but when all of the odds are stacked against you, it's not impossible. God can do all things. That's why we love those stories. God's inviting you into his story, the greatest one ever told, the one that he came down as man and as God and he defeated sin, and he defeated death for you and for me. And we have the opportunity to respond to that today just by asking him to come into our life and deciding that we're going to stop trying to fight this battle on our own in our way. We're going to turn from our way. We're going to turn from our desires, and we're going to pursue him, and we're going to pursue his will for us. And if you want to do that, you can do it today. You can do it right now. You just pray this prayer. You say, dear Jesus, I believe that you came to this earth to die for me so that I could live for you. I'm sorry for the things I've done wrong. I'm sorry that I've tried to fight my own battles. 
I want you to fight them for me. I want you to fight them with me. I want you to fight them through me. Send your spirit to live inside of me. I make you my Lord and Savior today. Come into my heart and change it. Make me more like you. Help me walk like Jesus, like you did when you came to this earth, Lord. Change me today forevermore. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, we're doing something awesome. We're starting our crosswalk. I'm so excited that so many of you are going to join us in that. If you are not joining us this time, you can join us next time. You can also join us in our Zoom call on Wednesday nights. We'll be there at 6 p.m. You can check Jay Walker's Church on Instagram to get information about that and to get the Zoom code. So Jay Walker's, go win those battles that are impossible. Let God fight for you and with you and through you. Have a great week.